Hi, I'm David Armstrong. I'm the managing editor of Registered Rep Magazine and WealthManagement.com. I'm here with Skip Schweiss, uh, the president of TD Ameritrade Trust Company. We're at the Tiburon Conference, CEO Conference in San Francisco. Skip, thanks for taking the time. You're welcome. Good morning. Uh, so we're in the second day of the conference. What are you hearing here? What are some trends that resonate with you? Uh, what, what, what seems to be the, the, the big takeaways from the conference this year? Well, there are a few things. One is, and this has been much written about, but we talked a lot yesterday about the retirement landscape in America and helping American workers retire and how we've, we've done a, a reasonably good job of, of providing vehicles that help them accumulate retirement assets. And now we're starting to shift our thinking. I can tell there's a lot more thought in the industry going into the decumulation process. How do we do that? How do we guarantee them an income stream for life? Do annuities have, have a role in that uh, process, or, or what are better alternatives? So interesting to hear a lot of discussion around that yesterday. Insurance companies are certainly uh, stepping up. Insurance in companies are stepping up. There, there is an opportunity for them here uh, that, that is a little different from their traditional role in, uh, in making sure that that worker's nest egg lasts for the rest of their life. And, and that's where insurance companies can play a a very meaningful and important role for those workers. What about educating the, uh, in, in, in that vein, what about educating the, the uh, participant in, in this? Uh, is, there, is there a role for uh, uh, providers there to somehow bring more education to the participants about what, you know, how, how to handle their finances once they're out of the workforce? There's a big role there. And uh, Cynthia Egan from T. Rowe Price, I thought, had a great quote yesterday. She said, uh, participants are n not investors they're barely savers and they're absolutely inert, was her quote. Mm -hmm. Meaning you really have to actively reach out to them and and get pull them into the process to make them active participants in preparing for their own retirement. And that does include education, not only on accumulation, but on decumulation. What do I do with this pot of money once I've accumulated it to make sure that it does last my lifetime? It, it brings up uh, uh, the role of the fiduciary, uh, though, as well, right? I mean, uh, who is the fiduciary there? And that is it, is it the, the plan sponsor? Is it the plan provider? Where does the fiduciary line draw in, in the retirement landscape? That, that's right. That's a great question. And, and the plan sponsor is always a fiduciary. Uh, it's a fiduciary act to select service providers to the plan, select investments for the plan. Uh, there's also, uh, we talked a minute ago about insurance companies having a new opportunity to help American workers in their retirement. Advisors also have a new opportunity. There's a lot of new regulations around disclosures, around greater transparency of fees, which we think is a great thing to shine greater light on the services, the compensation that's uh, uh, going to service providers and their fiduciary status. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those are just now taking effect and uh, we're seeing some changes in the industry. We're seeing more movement toward lower cost investing to index funds and ETFs. And of course, there's, there's a lot more uh, regulatory uh, debate and, and decisions yet to be made around mm -hmm. all the fiduciary well, standards. Tell me, tell me about that. Where do we stand in Washington with the uh, SRO standard, and, well, or the SRO and the fiduciary standard? Right, that? right. So as we sit here today, some three weeks before the, uh, the elections, everything is sort of frozen. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody wants to rock the boat uh, this close to an election. So we'll see after the uh, presidential election, congressional elections, new Congress comes into play in, uh, in January. And we'll see what the new Congress uh, has to say about all this and, and a new SEC commission potentially. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are, you asked the right question, the, the two issues are paired. The, uh, the fiduciary standard, so Dodd-Frank asked the question, should brokers be held to a fiduciary standard when providing advice to retail customers? Mm -hmm. the, the parallel question is, should advisors, registered investment advisors, be held to some of the same rules that brokers have to play by? Now the second issue is in front of Congress, and the first issue is front of, in front of the SEC, but they're going to have to play together, and we don't expect to see a lot of movement on it until sometime into 2013 at this point. Okay. Uh, uh, the landscape for uh, RIAs out there, what, the, is, the, is, the, is the trend still uh, uh, increasing number of uh, uh, brokers going the independent route? Do we still see that happening, or is that slowed down? I would say that it's been a steady trend. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it tends to sort of spike a little bit when you get this wave of, uh, of uh, retention uh, periods expire, uh, but, but it, it, for the most part over the last several years it's been fairly steady. It's, it's a good pace. It, I wouldn't call it a, a tsunami, but it's a good pace. And over a long period of time in this industry we see a trend of, of uh, advisors moving from a wirehouse maybe to another wirehouse, but ultimately then to an independent broker-dealer relationship, mm -hmm. and then ultimately to an RIA status. 
tends to be the trend. You almost never see it go the other direction. So it's sort of a, uh, a steady pace that we continue to see as we have in recent years. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, uh, concerns here at the at the conference that you're hearing uh, uh, around any of these issues? What else? Are, what else are you hearing here? Well, the, the big. Uh, I sat on a panel yesterday afternoon around regulatory issues, and uh, we got a, actually got into the discussion of the national debt mm -hmm. and deficits. Mm -hmm. There was a palpable frustration, I, I might even call it anger, in the room about our inability to deal with these issues. Uh, Social Security is one leg of that, mm -hmm. and, and it's eminently solvable. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Retirement age has not kept pace with life expectancy, and so we've created an actuarially unsound system. Everybody knows it, we just don't have the political will to solve it. And it's the similar, similar thing with our deficits. Uh, we just seem to have a lack of leadership in Washington to really address these difficult problems. Social Security and Medicare are the two things that have to be addressed. And it's Those are the big ones, and, and Chip Rome talked about it yesterday morning. Uh, they're eating up an ever-growing portion of the, uh, the national budget and taxpayer dollars, and we can see it coming, and uh, we have to do something about it. It's, it's very clear we need to do something. Uh, speaking of government regulations, if I go in this direction, uh, uh, financial advisors are, are stricken, I think, with a, with a lack of clarity over tax rates. Uh, you, you know, how, how, do they, how do they approach this? What, you know, how, what's, what's the best way for an advisor to uh, advise a client when they don't have any clarity over, over taxes to be paid? or? It, it's very difficult, and we talk about this fiscal cliff that we're just about on the precipice of right now as we approach year end. But it's one of the speakers here yesterday talked about the fiscal cliff is not a single issue. And he listed on a slide a whole list of, of uh, tax rates that are going to change come January 1st in the absence of any action by a lame duck Congress. So uh, you're right to ask, you know, how does an advisor guide their clients in, in the face of so much uncertainty? And I, I would say if there's, if there's one element of certainty is that taxes are going up mm -hmm. from 2012 to 2013. And it's, it's a little hard to say where and by how much and when, but uh, I would say taxes are going up. So if there's any advice to be given, it might be you know taking gains this year as opposed to, to pushing them into 2013 and things like that. Excellent. Okay. Well, Skip, thanks very much for taking the time. You're welcome. Enjoy Thank it. Thank you.